Gridlife Touring Cup returns to NOLA Motorsports Park for the second race of the day. Welcome back to Gridlife Live. My name is Kyle Heyer, joined by Tom O'Gorman with Erica Till waving to us up here in the stand as we drive on by. Uh, out up front, I think uh, we've got our buddy Ed's car is actually pacing the field as the field rolls off. But Tom, this morning we had our first race of the weekend, an incredible mid-pack battle, and there's still lots to come here. That was some of the best battling for sure. Any any GLTC race weekend, um, and a lot of it was spurred on because one of the contenders this weekend, uh, as far as we know, made the weirdest choice ever to go out on completely rain tires in the dry. That's Luke McGrew, uh, and he's actually going to line up 12th on this grid, so that car is going to be fun to watch. But that sparked bunches of battles all over the place. We had a couple of just really good duels, um, but at the front, it was really quiet other than the hum of a K24. Eric Coutille just kind of motored into the distance. Todd Cayley was a lonely second. Um, and then Andrew Rains, uh, who will start fifth in this race, was a fairly lonely third. All the battling was fourth on back. So I think uh, the storylines that we need to keep an eye on, uh, other than Luke McGrew, uh, Todd Cayley was just kind of off pace from Eric Coutille. He didn't have the lap times to stick with him. Uh, and then also, what will uh, just some extra laps to this field do? With every Everybody has raced now wheel to wheel with somebody else. They know where the passing opportunities, strengths and weaknesses lie. And now they get to put that to good use with a reset. And the starting lineup for this race, I'm going to roll through it relatively quickly. On the front row, it's going to be Eric Cattill in the number 82 a Honda Civic SI. Todd Cayley in the number 161 will line up alongside him on that front row. Row two, Justin Lee and Dyson Pham. Row number three, Andrew Raines and Andy Smedgard. Uh, actually, that might be, uh, it's probably uh, Ronnie Solomon again. And then in row four, Eric Meadows and Joel Morrison, William McDonald and Scott Adams in row number five, Scott Robertson, Luke McGrew in row number six, Patrick Rice in the number 168 in 13th alongside Dan Bird in 14th for row number seven, then Frederick Scott, Brian DeFries in row eight, uh, Dine Wen in the 920 car starts 17th, and Jeremy Boysen starts at the tail of the field uh, in 18th place for this race. So field lining up, and they'll be double filing here relatively shortly yep. as we enter the backside of the course here, Tom. 15 minutes set by lap time from race number one. Your thoughts on how this one might go? Well, for drivers like Dyson Pham, who made a big mistake in the middle of that race, uh, gets a reset. He will start fourth despite finishing well down the order in race one because, again, we're gritting this race off of fastest lap, not off of finishing order. So there is some shuffling around in the field. The other thing to note, rewards weight is in play. Eric Coutille, Todd Cayley, and Andrew Raines all have additional weight bolted into their car, 75, 50, and 25 pounds respectively. So those cars' performance may start to dial back a little bit. The last question mark I have, Jeremy Boysen, I don't know if my race director can hear me right now, but race director Jeremy Boysen, I don't know if he passed tech or not, but if he didn't pass tech, that would be the reason he starts at the back. He did finish, I think, fourth or fifth. So that's a question mark, too. We'll watch the 99. And he'll be, he was fast, too, so he'll be charging he through the field. Uh, and as the field doubles up, they head into uh, turn 13 on the backside of the racetrack. Double file again. 18 cars were nine rows deep. And we were uh, had a pretty intense lap one, turn one last time, but it was relatively clean. So we'll hope we can do the same this time, doubling up as they head through the last couple of corners. And it uh, looks like, is the pace car going to stay out another lap? We're going to get another pace lap here, or are they going to pull off later? Not sure. I don't I'm know if there's a way to pull off later. If we get the oh, green there is a way. Yeah, okay. they are. If we get the green flag, I'm watching the car on the inside of row three. That's the black BMW of Andrew Raines. He was really aggressive and really smart at the beginning of race one. Keep an eye on that car. Grid Live Touring Cup race number two from NOLA Motorsports Park. About to turn them loose. 18 drivers deep. The second of four races this weekend. Eric Cattell alongside Todd Cayley in the 161. Green flag flies, and we're racing at NOLA. Wow, look at that BMW from fifth. Got a little bit of a run, but Dyson Pham is the big mover so far. He's up alongside Luke, uh, sorry, Justin Lee. They're still side by side for Kaylee and Kutil into turn one. The field streams underneath our drone into the braking zone. Lots of bumps. Oh, a push maybe from the back of uh, Ronnie Solomon into, I think that's Dyson Pham in the blue S2000. Hugs the apex of the next corner here, but Kutil leads now by five car lengths with Kaylee in behind. Luke McGrew is about seventh already up from the uh, from the 12th spot on grid. They're going to go three wide meadows and, oh. and McGrew split Ronnie Solomon and they're both going to go around him. So Moot McGrew is still on the outside. Now they're going to go three wide with Dyson Pham, and it's a four-car breakaway at the front. McGrew shows the nose on the blue S2000 of Pham, and that is a black NC Miata with that Duratec motor. He's got to run, but he's going to be in the puddles. And side-by-side side now, Dyson Pham, Luke McGrew. Luke chose rain tires, as you mentioned earlier. Now he's 
going to be on slicks as he comes on through. We're going to get to see the true pace of McGrew's car now as he trails that blue S2000. Ryan Solomon in behind. There's that 72 car. Scott Adams, who was so fast in the first race, ended up having to drop out. Uh, but he will get at starting position because of his fast times. And he is right in behind uh, that big battle for about fifth spot right now. Here comes Luke McGrew again on the back of Dyson Pham. They are side by side into the S's, which is a bold move on the opening lap. But they're going to do it. Here they come. Luke McGrew is on the outside, sweeps around Pham. And they're still side by side. No, McGrew completes the pass. Look at Eric Coutille, 10 car lengths or more already at the front. He is just dialed this week. Again, uh, new rules changes. He had to, car to get the car retuned and redynoed and everything this week, but he's gotten that car dialed in. McGrew, Fam, Meadows, and Solomon all knows the tail as they come through turn 13. Scott Robertson is, as well. He drives that car to events with a little trailer behind it. Here he is racing up there inside the top 10. Yeah, you heard that right. He drives the car to the racetrack, shifts it over to track mode, and then changes it back to drive it home. But he is running in the eighth place right now, just behind Ronnie Solomon. Headlights are already on as the sun is starting to get pretty low in the sky. Coutille comes across to complete lap one. Now Kaylee, Lee, Reigns, and McGrew are the top five. Look at Luke McGrew up seven spots this first lap. Well, we knew that Luke was going to be fast, and we were so perplexed in the opening race why he was dropping so many spots. It was just the tire choice. The car is wicked fast, and Luke is a really good driver. He will go farther forward this race. We know that. Dyson Pham has Eric Meadows all over him as they sweep through turn one. And Pham, remember, he was really fast in race number one, but doesn't seem to have the pace quite yet. Uh, he had been moving almost up into the fourth position when he made a mistake and dropped back in the field. Look at McGrew. He's tucked right underneath the back of Andrew Reigns, and Andrew Reigns is on a 100 treadwear tire. Luke McGrew is on a full race tire, so he's going to have the advantage in the twisty sections, but that BMW is really quick in a straight line. Reigns going for a little bit of a wider line, actually loses the apex and oh. misses it, and now Luke McGrew in the white-topped car is going to have a run up into turn five. He probably will be able to complete that pass at the top of the screen. You see Jeremy Boysen. He's grabbed a bunch of spots here in the opening couple laps. He's moved himself into 11th spot. The first time around, McGrew completes that pass, puts himself uh, up into third position, is going to go to or try to go run down Justin Lee. I think that's fourth, actually, my mistake there. So uh, he's going to continue that climb as they head onto the backstretch. Justin Lee's doing a really good job to stay in contact with Todd Cayley. Uh, and he had, I think, an ABS failure that put him out of race number one, but he had a really good lap that uh, – Bounced him back up into the top grouping of cars for the grid on race two, and so far he's having a strong run, but Luke McGrew's going to run him down really quick, I think. Todd Cayley uh, has Justin Lee only about 10 car lengths behind him. The battle right Ooh. now, Eric Meadows and Solomon into turn 13. Meadows deep on the brakes. He's been very aggressive there so far today. We'll hang on to that spot. Scott Robertson, big flame fireball at the back of that car on the downshift. Meadows and Solomon are the silver and yellow cars just there on the left. They're battling for what is seventh and eighth. Uh, and that battle is hot. Everyone else kind of spreading out just a bit until I suspect McGrew will eventually catch Justin Lee if we sus if we uh, get the pace out of that car. Andrew Reigns has dropped to fifth, and he's falling into the clutches of Dyson Pham potentially. Across the line, and they came out of that final corner all the way up against the concrete wall over the edge of the rumble strips. Do we know where the track limit is there? I would assume to the inside of those, and I don't think they'll probably be officiated there today, yeah. but uh, they're, they're getting real creative with using all that extra racetrack. Solomon is still all over the back bumper of Meadows there. Center screen, and they flash out into turn number two. Robertson is within striking distance, and then Jeremy Boysen in the black and white RSX sweeping through turn two. He had a drag race with Scott Adams down the front straightaway, and he won the race into turn number one, so he's into the top ten now up from very last on the grid. Is that Dyson Pham? That's side-by-side -side with Reigns right now through uh, what is, I believe is turn three, and they're going to sweep on through. Pham not able to complete that pass, but, but super aggressive in front of him. Look at Justin Lee and Luke McGrew. Luke completes that pass around the outside. That's awesome some stuff. So now that's a podium for Luke McGrew up to third. Now the race three grid is based on finishing order for this one. So position matters. This sets you up for the next race, not only for the finish of this race. Now uh, up a little, or sorry, a little further back on the road, Eric Meadows has found some boosters and he's up underneath the back end of Dyson Pham, who is being held up, I think, a little bit by Andrew Raines. Those are the three cars on the left side of the screen. It's going to get really entertaining here down towards turn 13, one of the heaviest braking zones on this racetrack after flowing through the S's right, left, right, left, and left again as they sweep through. And Pham, kind of the meat in the sandwich right now as they come on through. And, and Meadows doesn't have the headlights on just yet, but uh, Solomon does behind. That's got to be a bit of a distraction maybe as well. Yeah, this foursome is going to turn fierce. Solomon is really fast at the end of these S's, but look how good the Miata is on the brakes. Jumps Whoa. on him. Whoa, Solomon goes for the dive. Oh, really deep into turn 13. Completes the pass, but Meadows is going to get back to the inside, and he's got overlap there, climbs the curbing. And they're going to run side by side of the last couple corners. Losing touch a little with the back of Dyson Fan, but Ronnie Solomon completes the pass, finally gets it done and closes the door on Eric Meadows, who's still trying to hold the outside, chucks it in. Is it going to work? He's going to go all the way out of those curbs. 
Man. Oh, it's still not going to pay off for him. No. no. Loses some nope. drive on those curbs. Maybe even missed a shift. Yeah, something definitely was wrong there as he's slow coming out of the corner. There are Scott Robertson, Jeremy Boysen thundering on by as they come across the line. A six minutes completed this 15-minute race, and that was a mistake there maybe for Eric Meadows. Yeah, keep an eye on that RSX. They're now just coming towards the cameras. He didn't quite complete the drag race this time, but that car's really quick. Now just turning through turn number one. Scott Robertson completes the pass on Meadows, though. I think Meadows probably has to grab a shift coming onto the front straightaway, and if he was on those curbs, maybe missed it. Some battles going on a little bit deeper in the field, but we're going to keep our focus a little bit closer to the front right now. Uh, Todd Cayley is being run down by McGrew now as they sweep out yeah. of turn number four. There, that is going to be a pass for position uh, if this remains at current pace. Took 1.4 seconds out of Todd Cayley's second place lead uh, just that last lap, and we're only seven minutes into this race, so he's got over half race distance to go. Uh, we have a big lunge at the back of the pack between a couple of the drivers down there. I think that is DeFreeze and uh, Rhea is potentially going through turn three. Uh, just a quick shout out finally to Eric Coutil, 151.6. That is cow. wildly fast in a GLTC car. He's got that Civic turn up. Absolutely wild. I know Scott Robertson right now is playing defense. Uh, he's got boys in and Adams behind him. And there is that battle with the freeze. Uh, I think that's also uh, when in the 920 that's back there. And then mm -hmm. Bird in the, uh, the blue CRX, that number 22 car. So they're having a good scrap back there. As the battle for a second continues to close, Justin Lee's not too far behind. And also we've got uh, uh, Reigns and... Uh, Dyson Pham going back at it again into turn 13. That's the battle on screen right now. Pham is hunting just a little bit. He's showing the nose on the braking zones. He's letting Reigns know that he's there, but Reigns has a ton of racing experience. Probably a pretty cool cat. The question is whether or not he's got enough grip in those 100 treadwear tires. He's definitely going to be down on cornering speed. You can see Dyson Pham closing up the gap just a little bit as he's rolling more speed, but that BMW is good off the corner. Look at the torque. Pulls away a couple of car lengths off of turn 16 before they finally even out down the straightaway. About halfway through this race, getting in the slipstream now, utilize that big uh, that, that big chassis in front of him to tuck in behind as they come through. Robertson still defending from Meadows and Boysen. Boysen taking a look out to drivers right towards turn number one. He might take a stab at it in the braking zone. Not quite this time as they leave frame there at the bottom, and Scott Adams is not really out of this one. If they start to bicker amongst the three of them, Scott Adams is absolutely in this battle. And this battle coming out of the front straight away, we're taking a look at DeFreeze, Wynn, and, uh, and Bird. Bird. Those three are having a great battle, even if it is for uh, 13th, 12th, and 14th. Coming across the line now, they're all right on top of each other. There they are in view. A couple of Hondas screaming by. This, this is just the, how GLTC goes. Even if uh, if your car is not too, quite to the rules, you can still have an amazing battle. Even if it's for 15th, you're still having fun. Put a smile on your face. How about the battle for 11th? Uh, that is Frederick Scott and Patrick Reyes. It's a, it's a, a mid-90s Mustang battling with a Honda S2000 on street tires. And they've been a little quiet, but they've had some back and forth too. Uh, they're working their way towards turn three as the battles towards the front have fizzled for just a moment. Well, second place is under attack right now. That is Todd Cayley in the 161, the silver and blue car. Then you've got uh, er, er, Luke McGrew in behind him with the checkered top black car and he's chasing him down into turn 13 and that is going to be one of the better battles except for the one behind them reigns famine uh, and solomon as they head into 13 as well solomon had a ton of confidence on the brakes going into that corner not this lap no opportunities but jeremy boysen oh. thinks about it shoves the rsx oh, big lock oh, up big lock up almost into the back of eric meadows but gathers it up and meadows was able to break away but Scott Robertson's pace looks really good. He's pulling away from those two. He's doing a great job, and I think he's having fun right now as we watch Boysen go back to the inside of Meadows through turn 15, and now he's going to stay there through turn 16 as well. Wow. Back onto the front straight, reel it back up, wind up the motor, and send it down the straightaway as they come across the line having their scrap. And he got it done. That was pretty impressive to hang around the outside in that RSX, and now just motors past Eric Meadows up the front straightaway. Scott Adams is in the fight now between those three, but that fight is only for ninth. And there's that battle again between DeFreeze, Wen and Bird. And they're, they're going to be having so much fun right now in their own little world back here, but enjoying every bit of it. Erica Till is way out front, uh, ran a 151.386 last lap. That's a new track record for GLTC. Wow. Uh, he's just got a whole logbook full of those today as he rockets on through, leading by, uh, uh, is that right, two seconds over Luke McGrew? Is that only? Is that all, all he has? 
I think this is sorted by uh, fastest lap. Oh, maybe. that won't be why. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering why that would that would be the case. Uh, you're right. I have to tell me. Look at Die Win with a run on Brian DeFreeze down the front straightaway. They're going to go side by side into turn one, about to appear in your frame. There they are, but Win backs out of it and is going to tuck back in line. So no, not enough confidence on the brakes through those bumps in the older Civic versus the newer Civic with ABS. Uh, Eric Cotil has many car widths, but Luke McGrew has gone through to second over Todd Cayley into the S's. They are now single file with McGrew at the point. Uh, Kaylee is going to try to keep him in touch here as they head towards 13. A great run here. Going to charge down towards that corner in the braking zone. Oh, Mc McGrew is going to keep him honest and won't let him go down to the inside. So they're going to say second and third as it stands. Unfortunately for these drivers, there's still a huge puddle inside turn number 13's braking zone, which was that passing opportunity. White flag is out for Eric Cotillo. We're on the final lap with 11 and a half minutes complete on GLTC race number two. And a couple of these positions are not decided yet. We're still watching Todd Cayley, who has a little bit of a run on Luke McGrew. They're nose to, no, nose to tail on the front straightaway. Oh, thank God they're not nose to nose. That wouldn't be very yeah. fun. Down the straightaway, though, Todd cayley has got that slipstream. He's going to have a look out here to drivers right. Not quite, not close enough. Brake lights fire up as they head down into turn number one. Todd said he was on the rev limiter down the front straightaway. I think he had the run and then probably popped it a couple times. Dyson Pham, though, he's got a huge run on Andrew Raines. They're down the front straight just a little further ahead of the cars we're watching now on camera. They're and side by side. He's going for it. Into turn number one, side by side. Oh, sweeps the outside oh. and makes it happen. Andrew Raines has to give the position up as Pham carried so much speed around the outside of turn one. And now Ronnie Solomon might have a run on Raines as well. Puff of smoke out of the, the CRX as he sweeps through the S's. Again, the white flag is out for the race leader, yeah. Eric Cattill, but lots of battles all over the racetrack Reigns went defensive, and he has to defend from Ronnie Solomon. I'm keeping an eye on the specs, but it's hard to tell which color is what. There's still two of them side by side. Looks like Solomon was able to hold the outside around turn three and has the inside advantage for turn four, but Reigns gets the power down, and they're still going to be side by side. Solomon through the puddles and now tucks in, I think. Cotill leads the way through the S's for the final time in race number two with all the battles happening in the mirror today for the driver of the 1992 Civic SI. And I think while we're, we enjoy our buddy Eric, the battle and the, the cameras are on the drivers in second. Luke McGrew leads Tom Cayley by four car lengths. Make it three, make it two, make it one. Cayley's there towards the braking zone. Deep on the brakes, has a look down the inside. Can't quite get there. McGrew hangs on. A little further back, Andrew Reigns was able to hold off Ronnie Solomon, so it's Pham, Reigns, and Solomon, but the battle for second. Second place is under attack. Eric Cattill wins two for two today in Grid Live Touring Cup. For second place, McGrew and Kaylee battling nose to tail as they come out of the final corner. McGrew going to get that Duratec 2.5 throttled up to the line now, and it's going to be McGrew by two car lengths over Todd Kaylee. Second, third, McGrew, Kaylee. That's your podium, fourth place now believe is going to be Justin Lee with some hard chargers coming up pretty quick behind him. Yeah, Justin Lee didn't have much attack that time, but he didn't have the pace to stick with the front runners. He crosses in fourth. Dyson Pham, a well-finished fifth, and Andrew Raines, an impressive sixth, uh, battling off some cars on stickier tires than he's got. Robertson is through to drag race across the line Woo! for Boyson and Meadows, but Meadows takes it to hang on to the top 10. So Boyson up from 18th to 10th, uh, but Meadows said no, no, no further. That was pretty wild. Uh, still a couple scraps going on around the racetrack. I'm waiting to see our buddies in the Hondas at the, towards the, the tail that are, have been having all their fun. I think we've lost one of the three in that battle. Yeah, Dai Win had dropped out of it, so now it's just the new 8th Gen Civic versus the old EF CRX. And they're in the final braking zone for turn 13. Watching these guys come through. Big body roll on that newer Civic, but he has to check up big time for turn 14. CRX closes the gap. This might actually be a drag race. Coming through the final couple corners, turns 15 and 16, carrying all the momentum you can. And gear it up, Checkered is waving for the last couple drivers. And while it's not for the lead, they are certainly battling to the start finish line. Here they come, Tom. Oh, he's just not quite got the legs in the little CRX. Now they flash across the start finish line and Brian DeFries holds on for 14th over Bird. And unfortunately, Dai Win. Dropped out of that battle, but he is still circulating, coming out of the front straightaway right now to finish. Uh, he is going to be our final finisher as McDonald. I, I don't think he started. Don't even started the race. Yeah, so we actually started 16 cars that time through. Yeah, so, uh, well, that <laughs> this racing this weekend has been all about the mid-pack battles, Tom. I, I think Eric Cattill has got something figured out. 
uh, and he has just absolutely been dominant this weekend, two for two. Uh, but as we look uh, ahead to the rest of the weekend, we have two more races tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow we're setting by finishing position. And Luke McGrew has put himself in position where I think he'd be good enough to win where he is right now. He's charged through the field, up a whole bunch of spots. Todd Cayley, uh, he seems like he's sort of stuck in second or third on podium right now. Justin Lee's been running top five this weekend. And Dyson Pham, very consistent runs this weekend so far, and he's doing well. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious to go talk to Todd. We haven't had an opportunity to talk to any of these drivers and see what is holding his ultimate pace back. But even Luke McGrew now uh, having made that odd choice in the first race, that's behind him. He's back up to second on the grid for not only today's finishing order, but tomorrow's starting order. Race three will grid in the exact order that you see on the left side of your screen now, which means Luke McGrew, who seems to have the best pace and opportunity to challenge Eric Coutille, uh, will be right there to do so. And if he can get a good start tomorrow and take the lead over Coutille, I think we might actually have a race out of this one but these drivers have to stop letting him get away and just drive off into the distance uh, and then the rest of it you could honestly shake from fourth to 11th just put them in a in a bingo jumbler and spit any of them out in any <laughs> order and you could be believable